Don't Starve is a game with 10 years worth of lore, including countless animations, posters, secret puzzles, forums, trailers, in-game easter eggs. You get the point. But whilst over these 10 years, Clay have managed to build a story that explains the game as a whole and most of the community's questions with it, one question still goes unanswered. You're probably wondering what this question is, and it's why does Maxwell do it? Why does he go to the effort of dragging people out of their regular day-to-day -day lives to live in a torture method made into a world? Although people have come up with some answers, it doesn't have an actual conclusion, and that's why in this video I will be coming to a conclusive decision on why Maxwell steals people from the real world and dumps them into the constant. So without further dramatic waffling, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to get out of the way is that Maxwell isn't exactly the one pulling all the strings. In fact, he could be very well pulling none of the strings. Because we don't really know how much of an influence them have on Maxwell and Charlie, I guess. But what we do know, judging by the adventure mode finale, is that them, or what I'll be referring to as the shadow creatures, are the real ones pulling people into the constant, or at least are the ones that want people to be in the constant the most. But why? I mean, sure you can say that they're just villains of the Don't Starve universe, but that couldn't be right, because every villain needs a motive, especially ones that go to this much effort. But what could their motive be, you may ask? And I think that the Shadow's motive for all this is from being ignored, or even loneliness. Now I know that sounds kind of strange, but all the dots connect when you really look into the story of the game. This is first evident when Maxwell is experimenting with the Codex Umbra, and after pulling too many things from the constant, he sees a Shadow creature for a few faint seconds. Now this may be a pretty wild claim, but what if the Shadow creatures are in the normal world of Don't Starve? Just no one can see them. Insanity isn't just a cool stat to add to your problem surviving in the constant, but more a curse. A curse that only affects people in the constant, therefore making people that aren't in the constant never able to see them. And shadows just lurk the normal world of Don't Starve watching regular citizens. But the only way to actually lose sanity in the real world is by interacting with an item from the constant, such as the Codex Umbra. But this logic still doesn't make that much sense. How could Maxwell's magic performances work if no one can actually see the shadow tricks he pulls out of his book? Well, the Codex Umbra works differently. Because shadow creatures that are pulled out of it, everyone can see. And the way I picture the Codex Umbra is an artificial shadow maker. And the shadows pulled out of the Codex Umbra are a different type of shadow. For example, if a player is at full sanity, they can still see the shadow minions and shadow prison made from the Codex Umbra even though they aren't insane. But this still doesn't explain why the shadows somehow go this far just because they're lonely. And I think it makes perfect sense when you think about it, because if nothing in the real world can see shadows and nothing in the constant can see them, this inevitably leads to them never being seen by anyone or anything. An example that describes the situation pretty well is Jack Frost's from The Rise of the Guardians. Yes, I know, a children's movie. But if you're not familiar with this movie, it shows us Jack Frost, a forgotten holiday folklore character like Santa or the Easter Bunny. And in the beginning of this movie, it has Jack Frost and his miserable life of not being noticed, as no person can see or acknowledge his existence, as he's fully forgotten as a folklore holiday character. And when people stop believing that he exists, he disappears from existence, and absolutely no one can see him except himself. And he does this for hundreds of years. And in this movie, we see just how miserable someone can be when they're just left wandering the earth, listening to their own thoughts, preying upon something to happen that just involves them. And we see how just overwhelmingly happy he becomes when he's just acknowledged, or even gets the slightest hint that someone knows he exists. Now, if you're still not convinced that this logic is correct, just look at the Lunar Island for a great example, because we see that the curse of sanity instantly leaves when entering the island but the Codex Umbra still works. And um, the shadow creatures can still be seen walking around the island if the player enters it at low sanity. This miserable life that they undergo understandably leads to the shadow creatures experimenting since they actually find a formula that gets them noticed and they realize that they can actually get recognized and acknowledged. So of course they're gonna lure as many people as possible into the constant. Probably out of pure curiosity, but later in this video you'll find out it isn't exactly curiosity. And later in the videos now. Because here's where the sad part of the theory comes in. And that's realizing the truest motives of the shadows. And that's to try get themselves killed. Yes, that sounds pretty strange and I don't blame you for thinking that. But when you think about how depressing their lives are, 
and that we know of, there's no possible other way for them to die, except for the player killing them. This means that when a shadow creature tries to kill you, it isn't because they hate you or because they're a spiteful villain, but more because they want you to put them out of their misery of being a lonely, eternal being. And since the humans in the constant are their only gateway to death, I don't even blame them for trying to kill the humans in the constant. I mean, if you think about it, it's the smartest thing they can do. Because realistically, if they just walk around the constant, the players aren't really going to kill them because they aren't really a threat to them. But if they charge at the player trying to kill them, then the player is forced to kill them. So this ultimately leads to them just doing that over and over, trying to get as many shadow creatures killed by the player. And the final touch to this theory is that the reasoning of the shadows controlling Maxwell and Charlie is to get them to use their powers to create a world where the player is set up to fight shadow creatures through just the night and negative sanity auras. Oh, and also having to craft things using nightmare fuel, and most of these things are the, almost the best things you can craft in the game. So when you look at the game that way, it really shows that Maxwell creating the constant the way it is, is the shadows making you create a formula, forcing the player to kill more and more shadow creatures. That would also explain why they drop nightmare fuel, because their existence really is nightmare fuel. But hey, why would the shadows even befriend Charlie? Well, I think that Charlie is their test dummy that the shadows use to see how humans affect them and to even find a better solution than death, such as combining with Charlie, which we see in previous animations. I also think Maxwell doesn't pull all the strings, but instead is a human, and humans are the only being capable of creating new things in the constant. This theory kind of reminds me of chess, because although the king may not hold all the power strength-wise, the game can't continue without it and it really is the heart of the chess pieces and the most important figure. So to truly answer the great question, why do shadows drag people into the constant? My answer is that the shadows are using people to fulfill their great destiny, death. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this theory as much as I did making it. It sure was an interesting one, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to think of it in the comments, and if there's any holes in the story. But have a great day or night, and see ya.